Welcome along guys and welcome back to my hugely unpopular series called Riding in the Rain. Today we have the brand new Triumph Trident. I suspect if you're interested in this bike you've already watched the launch videos, you know, the riding it through beautiful Tenerife. That's all very well. I'm sure it's brilliant in Tenerife. But what's it going to be like in the middle of winter, five degrees, in the rain, on the British roads? Well, that is what we're going to find out. I need to say a massive thank you to Destination Triumph, links below, for lending me this bike. This is one of their demonstrators. If you want to ride this bike, go to their website, book a test ride. They're, they're doing test rides on these. So go and have a look, book yourself a test ride, and let me know what you think of this machine. But please check out Destination Triumph. But without further ado, may this roll the intro. It's surprisingly grunty. <laughs> it's my first impression of this. I think it's eight, 79 horsepower and 64 Newton meters of torque, I believe. I'll flash it on the screen if I've got that wrong. But it is the, it's actually the 675 Daytona motor, which has been, you know, as a smaller bore, longer stroke, different cams, different airbox, different inlet. You know, quite revived. I think there's 66 different changes, but the end result is the Daytona engine was obviously redlined at 13,000 RPM. This redlines at 10,000 RPM. The Daytona was 120 horsepower, 115 horsepower motorcycle. This is an 80 horsepower motorcycle. So, what they've done, they've detuned it. But what that means is more usable grunts and also 10,000 mile service intervals. Stepping on the bike straight away it's a it's a very comfortable position it's different to the street triple rs you're more upright it's it's more relaxed than say the street triple which feels like a sort of mini tuono it's quite sporty you're sort of cantered forward a little bit you're upright more on this this is probably a better everyday riding position because this bike is you know make a perfect little commuter i would assume it's 188 kilos wet i believe and it does feel nimble it feels light it feels very agile you know it tips in really easily you can tell it's a very lightweight bike switch gear is also new i like that switch gear it's quite basic but it's got quite a nice feel to the buttons you know it's, it's more tactile than i'd say the buttons on some of the other other triumph models oh that mid-range Quick shift and a blipper is an option on this. This doesn't have it. <laughs> Suspension is actually quite firm. It's actually quite firm the ride on this. 41 millimeter Showa forks, non-adjustable though, but they ups are upside down 41 millimeter Showers. And you've got the rear Showa shock is adjustable for a bit of preload. And now my camera's gone all soggy and woggly. Oh, there it goes. Oh dear, oh dear. There goes the camera. Well, there's one bit of it. There's the other bit. Oh, it's come out of its case as well. Absolutely bloody marvellous. There's that bit. There's the case. There's the rest of the, <laughs> the mounting. Where's the actual flipping camera gone? Oh, there he is. There he is. Right, shall we, uh, shall we carry on? What I was saying, yeah, quick shift and blipper is an option on this doesn't come standard gearbox and clutch feel is actually very nice indeed it's nice bashing up and down through the box oh yeah that suspension is firm great on the back roads but perhaps that would get a little bit irritating around town perhaps i'm six foot two I was 18 and a half stone, I'm more like 19, I'm more like 19 something <laughs> during lockdown. So I'm probably way too, way too heavy for the suspension to be fair. But, it's certainly nice and sporty. Let's test out the turning circle. 
Yeah, it's not brilliant. It's all right, it's acceptable. Traction control coming on. The bike does have electronics, of course. ABS, traction control. It's got no IMU though. So it's more of a basic system. It's not sort of lean sensitive. But, you know, it's coming on there, it's working. The bike also has two modes. You have a rain mode and you have a road mode. I've actually got it in the full power mode at the moment. The brakes have got a very nice feel actually. A lot of pretty progressive. <sighs> yeah, they're good, considering they're just two twin pots. When you can't compare them to the likes of the SV650 brakes, which are the same sort of setup, you know, twin two pot calipers, they feel very wooden. These are a little tiny bit wooden, but they deliver a really nice bike, really nice feel for what they are. Rear bank is very nice. Very nice to sort of counterbalance the bike on the rear brake. Loads of grip, as I say, loads of grip. Down a cod. Power. Whoa, I stepped out a bit there. She stepped out a little bit there on the power. Dial it down a bit, Chops. You've already dropped a GoPro. Let's not add a Triumph Trident to the list today. It's certainly got the sporty credentials. You could buy this, you could enjoy it. It's great fun in the twisties. The suspension is a little bit hard, but it's not wallowy. I mean, like the MT-07, the suspension on that is completely wallowy. And the MT-07 is a lovely bike, but it's let down by poor suspension. This gives you the sportiness. This is stiff enough, but it could be a little bit jarry, you know, on potholes and stuff, but it's got the sporty edge. It definitely gives it the sporty edge. Let's go for another back lane scratch. I'm a little bit more cautious now <laughs> about back end. Yeah, the bike pulls really well. I'm actually really impressed. I knew this bike would be good. You know, I, I did a launch video on this bike, not a launch video, like a, a first look video on this bike. And the specs, the quality, it looked very, very good. It, this bike cost £7,100. So, you know, it's, it's very, very well priced. And riding it, apart from the suspension being a little bit harsh, you can't really tell where they've cut costs, how they've made this bike for £7,000. Normally cheap, budget, you know, entry-level bikes, which is what this is, normally you can see where the manufacturer has cut corners, they've skimped a little bit here, you know, where the bean counters have said, no, sorry, you can't have those brakes on that bike, you have to have these brakes. Yeah, it's a little bit wet. You can't really tell with this machine that it is a budget bike. It doesn't really feel hugely different to say the Street Triple RS from a quality, from a riding enjoyment point of view. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a lovely bike. It's very enjoyable even riding it in eight degrees in the pissing rain. It's still very a very enjoyable ride, which is saying something, isn't it? Yeah, it's got really good power delivery right way through the rev range. All the way, I haven't even hit the red limiter yet. I've had it flashing, but it's got a really nice drive of power. Okay, let's get it on the motorway. Let's see what it's like at motorway speeds. It's obviously being a, a naked, Let's get in front of this. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's a lot of water. 70 miles an hour, five and a half thousand revs. Absolutely cruising. If you were to nail it, 80 miles an hour. It's fast enough. Of course, it's completely naked, so you're getting a bit of wind blast, but it's an even spread of wind. It's not you know, directed at your helmet, it's, it's at your chest. It's absolutely fine. You guys, filthy. It's absolutely filthy. At 75, I can feel a tiny little vibration in the bars. A little bit of vibes in the bars. Tiny bit of vibration in the foot peg, but certainly not excessive. Yeah, it's a little bit of vibe in the bars here. If you're going to spend all day at motorway speeds, you're going to notice that. It's, it's not horrendous, but it's sort of the same as the S1000RR, let's say. Stay in your lane. 
you know, it's, it's not absolutely terrible, but I can notice it. Perhaps the optional bar end mirrors could stabilise the bar ends a little bit. With the bar end mirrors, it might cut down on those vibes. I'll definitely put the bar end mirrors on this. The sound of it is lovely. It's got that undeniable triple whine. Undeniable. You know, there's no, there's no questions what this bike is. You could, you could, you could ride this blindfolded. Don't recommend it. But you could ride this blindfolded, and you'd know. You'd know it was a triumph just from the sound of it. See, on these bumpy roads, it's a little bit jarry, the suspension. A tiny little bit. I mean, I'm being ultra critical here. I'm, I'm not reviewing this bike as a budget machine. I'm reviewing this bike as any other bike I would be riding. You know, price excluded, what are you going to notice of it? And it's, it's a little bit jarry over the bumps. You know, I'm a fatty. That's not going to help. But, it's, you know, it's firm. It's a firm ride. But I'd like that. I'd prefer a firm ride. Don't do it. I prefer a firm ride over a wallowy ride any day of the week. Throttle response seems very good. There's no snatchiness. I was a bit worried when I started it cold and revved it. There's a bit of a delay between it revving and they're turning the throttle and it revving, but can't really notice that now actually riding it. Which I think what we do, let's stop here and just do a little walk around of the bike. Let's get under the tree cover. <laughs> Not much cover really. In front of the lake. And let's do a quick little walk around. A good rain test is do you get shit spattered up your back? It looks like I've been getting a little bit coming up, but it's not too bad. I've not noticed anything coming up over the short mud guard either, so that's been alright. But I'll check my back in a minute <laughs> and we'll see what the situation is with this rear mud guard keeping the water off your back. But let's get the other camera out and I'll give you a quick little walk around. Well, there she is, the Triumph Trident, the long awaited Triumph Trident. I've been waiting to get on this bike for since it was announced, so I knew it would be a little cracker. Starting at the front, as I say, the two piston, two pots. Really, actually, rather nice brake feel from these. They're Nissan calipers. Show a big piston forks, 41mm. The bike is also fully LED'd. Let me turn it on. Full LED lighting. Very nice, very bright. LED indicators also standard. And to complete the LED look, an LED backlight. Engine, as I say, this is the uh, Daytona 675 engine. Slightly smaller capacity, detuned for better fuel economy and cost of ownership, 10,000 mile service intervals. It's a really nice unit, that. Very, very nice indeed. I like the way they've tuned it. Petrol tank with your Triumph branding. This is the... Uh, what colour is this? This is the... Oh, what do they call this colour? Um, this is the uh, Sapphire Black version. This is an extra £100, I think, this version. The Sapphire Black. One thing which did surprise me, the petrol tank, that's a cover. That's not a metal petrol tank. That's a cover over the... what I presume is the metal petrol tank. Or maybe it's a... Uh, you know polyurethane tank to keep weight down but that's not a metal petrol tank which is unusual for a triumph this one's been kitted up with a few crash bit of crash protection bit of the optional extras let's have a closer look at those clocks they are nice aren't they let's go to the menu button mode road mode rain mode perhaps we'll test the rain mode just to see what it's like the switch gear actually feels nice it's got a nice feel to the buttons better than, like I say, the, the normal Triumph switch gear. I actually quite like that. I don't know if that's a cheaper model of switch gear. Obviously, it's not going to be illuminated, I wouldn't have thought. But the feel of the buttons is nice. Now, one thing which is really good is the quality of the bike. I mean, the, the footrests and stuff. The quality is very, very high for a bike which costs £7,000. So there we go. There is your first little walk around of the Triumph Trident in the rain. It's certainly weather for ducks. Ducks are loving it, absolutely loving it. I'm not. Right, let us jump back on this fine steed and find some more wet roads to explore. I didn't check what my back was like from splattage. Let's look at the splattage on my back. Wow, I think I'd have some mud up there. I think it's had a little bit, but I don't think it's too bad, you know. So yeah, overall, the Triumph Trident, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Bad points about it? There's not a great deal, you know. 
there's not a great deal at all no matter how much this bike costs there's not a great deal wrong with it a little bit buzzy through the bars at motorway speeds a little bit suspension is probably the only area where you can see that they've saved a little bit of money it's a little bit crashy over over the bumps but they've gone for the sporty ride as opposed to ultimately comfortable and wallowy they've made this thing you know a mini a mini street triple really i guess and uh, i think they've done the right move i would prefer it to be like this it's not it's not too it's not too harsh it's perfectly acceptable but it's got that sporty edge the chassis on this is lovely so that the mt07 one of the big complaints with that that machine and the mt09 to some degree as well is there's too much flex in the chassis the suspension's poor when I mean, you could upgrade the suspension but there's nothing you can do with the chassis if the chassis isn't right it isn't right <laughs> there's nothing you can do from an aftermarket point of view to improve that the chassis on this is lovely the bike's very rigid you know obviously we've not done a little lift of the wheel there obviously we've not gone bananas on this today because it's wet so i'm going to take this out again in dry weather a bit later on when the spring arrives and we'll see what it really handles like perhaps we'll do a comparison with with greg with the new mt07 if we can lay our hands on one and that will be the ultimate test i think comparing that new mt7 to this to see which one is better Yes, it revs nicely. I haven't even found that red line yet. I haven't even found it. The seat is very comfortable. I mean, I've not been riding this particularly long, but the seat... Actually, it's got heated bloody grips, this one. Oh, it's got heated grips. Heated grips on. I don't know if that's standard. That can't be standard, heated grips. Surely that's an option. It's a lovely motorway bike. No complaints at all. 70 80 even 85 90 it handles it no problem could do it all day long you know this bike could be a brilliant commuter even something to do a bit of touring on of course this can also be made a2 compliant Let's give you a wipe i think it's a different throttle grip and it turns it into an a2 bike so you can buy this restrict it with the throttle grip grip and the map i think it has a special map as well but then you've got a bike you can grow with and when you pass your a2 when you're old enough bang you've got a lovely little package bags are grunt you know you you, <laughs> you don't need more than this the quick shifter and blipper would be a nice option i reckon i'll definitely have the quick shifter and blipper put on this if i was buying one of these but you know even without it it's still very good fun going up and down the gearbox the gearbox is lovely the gearbox is very nice the great thing about that triple engine is the fact that it gives you the best of both worlds and what i mean by that is it gives you almost as much grunt as a, as a twin and then the additional revs of a straight four so it's somewhere in the middle giving you the best of both worlds and I really don't know, don't know why more manufacturers don't produce their bikes with twin engines. Because for me, I actually think it's the perfect engine configuration for giving you the blend of power and torque. It's very nice. And I don't know why it's only Triumph that really do it. Because it's a fantastic way of delivering performance with a bike with a triple. Spot on. It's lived up to everything I thought it was going to. I thought this would be good. I was absolutely right. Triumph have nailed it. Try and get yourself a test ride. Like I say, Destination Triumph, they've got several branches. They sponsor the channel, so they're going to get a big plug here. So, massive thanks for uh, lending me this, guys. It's really appreciated. Really appreciated. Despite having to come out and the only opportunity to ride this bike is in this weather, it hasn't mattered. It hasn't mattered because the yeah, the, the excellence of the bike has shone through even if the sun hasn't <laughs> this has been this is a very very good little bike okay guys thanks for watching as always really appreciated take care stay safe and i'll see you soon cheers guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah. Is that one? I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Listen oh, to this. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, that's it.